Guahan Academy Charter School is finally ready to move forward with its student registration process after being unable to open for more than two years now. School director Donna Dwiggins met with Speaker Judy Wanpat, Senator Aileen Yamashita, the governor's chief of staff Frank Ariola, and others this afternoon to work through some of the challenges that the school has faced in starting up. There's money now that we have that's going to be allocated to us and it allows us to start the registration process and then we're looking forward to the opening of the school on August 19th. According to Matt Nane, the charter school does not know how much funding is being allocated or where the money will come from. But she says the news is enough to allow the charter school to hold on to federal grant dollars that it had been at risk of losing. It puts us back in good standing with those grants that were in jeopardy before. And um, so it just takes care of a lot of stuff and allows us the flexibility to start using some additional funding for other reasons. Okay. But I mean, this is a really good commitment from the government, and that's what we really needed was to show the federal government that we're actually, you know, moving. And this was like one of the, the biggest milestones that needed to be crossed. Today's meeting followed a letter sent from Department of Education Superintendent John Fernandez to Speaker Judy Wanpat this week, expressing his concerns about allocating funds from DOE's budget for the unopened school. While Public Law 31-233 requires the Superintendent of Education to allocate funds to charter schools, Fernandez says it just wouldn't be responsible to do so at this time. It's very difficult for me as Superintendent to, um, to uh, follow this law and direct um, the transfer of funds away from our school system without the proper um, uh, validation of their facility or the kids who are actually going to transfer out of our schools to, um, to the new charter school. Meanwhile, the Department of Education faces its own financial issues. I just got a projection that with the, with the increased utility rates, we're going to need to go to the governor and talk about the possibility of releasing some of the reserve funds just to cover those costs. It's, we're in a very difficult position because I have real students in, our, in real schools that need to be served. While he may not be willing to sign off on funding for Guahan Academy Charter School at this time, Fernandez says he is a strong supporter of charter schools and he even served on the board of a charter school when he was in Washington, D.C. But he says there are ways the legislature could improve the law regarding charter schools on Guam. One of the difficult, uh, difficulties here is really uh, for, the, for this charter school is finding a facility. And so I think the legislature should look at that. And I would also recommend that, um, that they look at, at uh, changing the ways in which the superintendent is involved. Um, I've asked them for chartering authority myself so I can charter my own schools to align, our, you know, align with the needs of our department. Um, but I don't know that I should be approving uh, funding for um, other charter schools, especially when it's taken away from the children that I serve. As far as procuring a facility for Guahan Academy, Matanane says startup funds from the local government will allow the charter school to move forward with the procurement process once again. Well, now it allows us to open the bids. So once we open the bids, then we could start the process of actually finalizing the negotiations on what the location will be. And as soon as, I mean, we should know all of that, hopefully within the next week or so. Betsy Brown, PNC News.